There are at least three ways to build most EDH decks. Strong, fun, and mean. Let's look at the strong, fun, and mean ways that I would build Zyrus the Rithing Storm. And the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel or Magic. I am Joel. We're going to talk about Zyrus, the Rithing Storm in EDH, and the strong, fun, and mean ways that I would build it. But first, if you liked the video by the end of it, consider liking, consider leaving a comment down there of a commander that you want me to build three ways. Let's jump into it. Zyrus the Rithing Storm is teamer plus two for a flying 3-5 snake leviathan that says whenever an opponent draws a card except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps, create a 1-1 one, one green snake creature token, and whenever Zyrus the Rithing Storm deals combat damage to a player, you and that player each draw that many cards. So a few things are immediately evident from this commander. We want our opponents drawing cards because we're going to get the payoffs. Those card draws can happen whenever if we want them to draw if we want to create a 1-1 for each card they draw, and if it's happening during their draw step, that's also fine too. We're going to get some residual value. The other thing is that Zyrus is going to be kind of welcomed to attack, okay? The opponent that we attack is going to get to draw cards equal to the damage that we deal with Zyrus. So, strong, fun, and mean. Strong, I would build this deck with wheels and a lot of card draw. Fun, I would build this deck Snake Tribal because that's pretty dope. And mean, I would build this deck Group Hug and just give all of the resources to every single person. Let's check out the strong way. With a wheels and card draw strategy, this is exactly what I want to be doing. Right here, windfall, one blue, two other. Each player discards his or her hand and draws cards equal to the greatest number a player discarded this way. Let's say that seven was the max hand at that time. Everybody draws back up to seven. You get to create 21 snakes and we're off to the races. That's exactly what we want to be doing. Here's that ability. We love redundancy when we're going down a path of a strategy. That's what you want to do. So for this ability, we've got two blue, one other on a 2-2 Vidalkin Wizard that says pay blue, tap it, each player discards his or her hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. Same thing as the other wheel, except this one could maybe happen over and over if they don't ace Jake's uh, Jace's Archivist as quickly as possible. The Locust God is further redundancy on card draws turning into one ones. Locust God is a 4-4 flyer for six that says whenever you draw a card, create a 1-1 one, one blue and red insect creature token flying and haste. All right, and then for four, you can draw a card, discard a card if you need to, and the Locust God is obnoxious because when it dies, it gets returned back to your hand and you can just recast it. All right, Locust God is gonna offer great redundancy on the 1-1 strategy. Here's another one that's gonna offer redundancy on the 1-1 strategy, and that's Nadir Kraken. Whenever you draw a card, you can pay one. If you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on the Kraken and create a 1-1 one, one off to the side. That's exactly what we want. We want to redundancy our card draw engine. We want to redundancy our 1-1 one, one maker engine. Psychosis Crawler is going to give us more synergy on card draws. Power and toughness equal to the number of cards in your hand. And whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses a life. So those wheel situations that we were talking about, how about if that wheel had happened with Psychosis Crawler on the battlefield and we all and we get to do seven to each opponent? If they don't answer Psychosis Crawler, this is going to be one of the most powerful cards in this deck and definitely a card that you want in your Zyrus deck, regardless of how you're building it. Consecrated Sphinx, everybody knows it. Two blue, four other for a four six flyer. Whenever an opponent draws a card, you may draw two. This card gets out of hand so fast. This card will put you so far ahead. You're essentially crafting your hand at certain points. If you're making them draw cards, you can choose to draw more if you want. I mean, this, this is just lunacy version of this deck. This is past strong and into supreme strength. Memory Jar, five cost artifact that you can tap to sack. Each player exiles all cards from his or her hand and draws seven. That's really what we want right there. That's a guaranteed draw seven to trigger our ability over and over and over. Then at the beginning of next end step, each player discards his or her hand and returns to his or her hand each card he or she exiled this way. So it's not so much you're drawing twice, but because you they do get placed back in your hand, but that draw seven is a guaranteed for five mana. It's huge. And then Arcane Denial. This is another type of synergy that you want to look for. Counter target spell, its controller may draw up to two cards at the beginning of the next 
uh, turn's upkeep. You draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. So you're countering the spell. You're getting some 1-1s one eventually if they choose to draw, which they most likely will because they'll just give you two 1-1s. One but that's the kind of thing that you're looking for here. Maybe cards that have a quote-unquote drawback, but we can use the drawback to our advantage. That's the strong wheel and uh, card draw strategy. I would say stick around for the mean portion of this as well. I think that probably the best way to build this would be combining the way I'm doing strong and mean and just go all in on that one strategy. But first let's talk about the fun way that I would build this and that is Snake Tribal. So this would be a really fun way to approach the payoff in this deck instead of, you know, maybe giving all your 1-1s flying and just going to town. Let's go the snake tribal route for our payoff so that we have some bigger snakes on the battlefield. I'll, I'll be honest, I've always wanted to build a snake tribal deck, but there's not really like a great commander that has some good colors built into it and, and really draws me to it. But Zyrus being a snake leviathan and making 1-1 green snakes really shouted to me, hey, maybe this is your chance, Joel, get your snake tribal on. Sashiro the Anointed is where I would start because it's an anthem just for snakes, so we get plus two, plus two on all our snakes, and whenever a snake you control deals combat damage to a player, you can draw a card. So we're getting further synergy off of making a ton of snakes. If we're going to run Sashiro, we should probably run Sashiro's son. I imagine that Sashiro's son is also a warrior in the snake army of Sashiro. We got a four cost three four that says other snakes you control get plus one plus oh. So we're making all of our snakes two ones with just son of Sashiro on the battlefield. It also has this ability to give warriors a sort of death touch, but um, that's not really something we'll probably lean into. But you could look at maybe some other warriors to run in this deck. Sashiro's daughter also is part of the army, I would assume. We got a 1-3 for 4 that says other snakes you control get plus 0 plus 1. So we get the other side of that anthem from the son of Sashiro. And she too has, a, has an unrelated ability. Shamans you control have tapped, add 2 green. So she taps to add 2 green herself. That's pretty nice. And uh, you may look into other shamans. There are, I think, some other snake shamans that could be running this deck. But you probably just want to focus on the snake stuff first. Here's more redundancy and it's on a snake. Two green, three other for a two six that says attacking creatures you control have death touch, which is huge. If we are making a ton of little one one snakes and they all suddenly have death touch, Mm, so choice. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So we get even further redundancy on that ability and we're just going to be keeping our hand full the entire time we're going to be making one ones we're going to be sending Zyrus to do some work we're going to be drawing cards as a result of it making more one ones and the cycle goes around and around Cassetto Orochi Archmage that's a mouthful Simic plus one for a snake wizard that says target can't be blocked target creature can't be blocked this turn for Simic if that creature's a snake it gets plus two plus two until end of turn so this is a way to guarantee Zyrus gets in for more damage if you just want to talk about it with your commander and we get to draw more cards and we get to create more one ones it's just this this is like this is the general this is the this is the commander of the army that is not our actual commander i guess this would be the lieutenant this would be my choice for the lieutenant of the snake army if we're assigning positions patron of the orochi is a seven seven that can tap to untap all forests and all green creatures that's your one ones play it only once each turn that's fine we're not going to infinite loop and it's got snake offerings so if we sacrifice snakes we can get patron of the orochi down in cost it does only give you the ability to sacrifice one snake to get the mana cost down however it could end up being a very cheap 7-7 seven, seven if you've got the right kind of snakes and sizes of snakes in play that can also get nutty with your forests and tapping your creatures. Orochi Hatchery is an XX spell that enters the battlefield with X charge counters on it. If you've never seen a card like this, you do have to pay that X spell twice. Sorry if you already know that, just want to touch on it real fast. Five to tap and put a 1-1 one, one snake to token onto the battlefield for each charge counter that Orochi Hatchery has on it. It's just, it's redundancy. We want more snakes, we want to go wide, we want to give them death touch, we want to pump them up a little bit so they're hitting for even harder when the opponents aren't blocking them. Really, we just want them in a situation where suddenly they're overrun with snakes and they don't know how they got to this point. Snake Pit is another one. Blue-black, it's pretty specific, okay? But whenever an opponent plays a blue-black, a uh, blue or black spell, you get to put a 1-1 snake onto the battlefield. So 
the chances that you hit some blue or black spells are pretty high, especially in a four-person pod if you're playing four-person free-for-all. So this is actually a card that if I was doing Snake Tribal, I would definitely be running, even though it does have some specific application and some things have to happen before it's really at its full potential. Kindred Discovery is a, is a staple in uh, tribal decks that have blue in it. Blue, blue, three. For an enchantment that enters a battlefield, you choose a creature type, snake in this, cho in this uh, instance. Whenever a creature you control of the chosen type, snake, enters a battlefield or attacks, draw a card. We're keeping our hand crazy full. Crazy full with this. We're going to have one ones that we can just send off to die if we just need to draw cards. That's not a problem. Just attack with some one ones and get that many cards. Go get your board wipe. Go get that specific removal you need. Whatever. Go get the pump for your commander so that we can finish this game off. I think this card is a house. Obviously, there's a lot of good artifacts that work well in any tribal deck. You already know about those. You can go look them up. I would include those as well, but I just wanted to kind of cover the stuff that was snake specific in this build with Zyrus. Let's talk about the mean way that I would build Zyrus, and that is Group Hug. Group Hug is a strategy that you can approach when you just want to give everybody so much that it keeps the heat off of you mostly, because everybody's like, oh yeah, Zyrus has given us a lot of cards and resources, we don't want to deal with it. But then it gets to a point where we have taken advantage, we knew that was the plan, our army has grown and grown and grown and grown, and suddenly there's too many 1-1s for anybody to deal with if they don't have any kind of board wipe, and we are just absolutely going to town and hopefully winning the game. And as a side note, like I said, you may want to combine this strategy with your strong strategy. I think that these two groups of cards may work really well together to form just really one strong, mean strategy. Heartwood Storyteller is where I would start. Green, green, one for a two, three that says whenever a player plays a non-creature spell, each of that player's opponents may draw a card. So everybody's going to be drawing cards and thinking that Zyrus is on the up and up and maybe on our side, but we will show them very quickly that we are group hugging everybody to death. Edric Spymaster of Trust, you know him, you love him, he's been around for quite some time. Simic 1 for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller may draw a card. This is keeping the heat off of you. You know, if you attack any of my opponents, you get to draw cards every time it deals damage. Don't you want to draw cards? Card draw is great, right? Draw more cards, draw more cards, draw more cards. Kami of the Crescent Moon is blue, blue, 1-3. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws a card. Cool. We're just going to keep drawing and we're going to keep gaining snakes and don't look over here. We're just doing our thing. I'm Zyrus. I'm fun. I'm not mean. Font of Mythos is a four cost artifact that says at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws two additional cards. It's a bigger Howling Mine. Howling Mine is one of my favorite cards of all time and that's why I included it in this list. When I first started playing, this card was just mesmerizing to me. I could not, I could not get around, oh my goodness, more cards? This is going to be great. Obviously, you're giving them to your opponent and if it's not built the correct way you're just handing out free resources and you don't want to do that you want to build it so that you know what was happening going in and you can take advantage of having all of the resources howling mine is great for that at the beginning of each player's turn everybody draws an extra card so you're at least netting one snake guaranteed every single opponent's turn it's a cheap early way to go ahead and get your engine online and get those snake tokens a flowing and card draw a happening so that your strategy can play out Temple Bell, three costs, tap it, each player draws a card. At your control, at your behest, you can ring the Temple Bell, get a 1-1 one, one, one snake from everybody drawing a card, and you get to draw a card as well. We want to keep our hand full, we want to keep 1-1s one, a-flowing. Horn of Greed, whenever, whenever any player plays a land, that player draws a card. This card is insane in this deck. It seems so much like, okay, guy, you're going to play Horn of Greed. Okay, this is going to be a quick game. Everybody's going to be playing lands and drawing cards and keeping their hand full. And I'm like, cool, yeah, 1-1. One, one. Oh, yeah, create a 1-1 one, one for that. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Horn of Greed. Howling Mind, go ahead, draw, create a 1-1. One, one. You can see how the pattern will go. Rights of Flourishing, if we have a lot of resources, we want to be able to play all that stuff. And that's what this deck needs to do. It needs to do a lot of, like, mana doubling if you can for everybody. This is why. Let everybody do it. And, you know, have fun. This one also has the added bonus of netting additional cards. Everybody's going to be drawing cards, creating one ones for you. They'll be playing lands. Their stuff is doubled. We can play all our spells. Yeah, go to town. I just want one one snakes. That's it. Don't worry about me. Old Zyrus is your buddy. 
We want to be friends. Those are the three ways that I would build Zyrus the Rithing Storm, one of my favorite new commanders from Commander 2020. Let me know how you would build Zyrus. Let me know if you've had any success with any specific cards in your deck. I'd love to do sort of a retrospective in the future after a lot of these decks start settling out and we see what some strong strategies are. I think Zyrus is a contender for a very strong commander in 2020, and I'd i am very excited to brew around them. If you never want to miss one of our videos, hit that subscribe button down there. If you want to support us further, we've got a Patreon. The link is down in the description below. And we stream on Twitch. Go check us out over there and we can hang out. We'll catch you later.